Casey would like to know if it's difficult to remain objective when you're discussing books written by your peers. I don't even try to remain objective when I'm discussing books written by my peers. I have accepted that I am not objective, and in fact, I, um, I'm not even sure that people who say they're being objective are actually being objective. I think most of us read books through a filter of subjectivity, and the people who are most insistent on talking about their objectivity, I am most suspicious of. I generally tend to try and keep my mouth shut. Uh, if I think it's really bad, I, I will speak up. Um, but I do believe uh, in the Army's adage, which is reward and public and punish in private. I'd much prefer, if I really have a problem with another author's work, to find them alone and just give them honest feedback. Rarely do I do that because it is so hard to be a writer and everybody has a bad day now and then. Terp Christen says, we often ask authors for the best piece of advice they ever got or their suggestions for first time authors. I want to flip that, she says. What is the worst piece of advice that you've ever received? Think of your readership. If you think of your readership, you're not thinking of yourself. You have to love what you're writing, otherwise why do it? You can always tell the books that have been written with readerships in mind. They tend to be kind of, they can be dull, lifeless, and kind of pandering to the audience. Um, be scary and be bold, that's fun. Worst bit of writing advice I've ever had was actually from an agent who said to a large room of people, a very few of you have a real chance of being published. Um, now, it's good advice generically, um, but it's the sort of advice that you have to disregard if you're ambitious, because you can't let it put you off. You've got to keep trying. Rob wants to know, what fiction would you recommend outside of sci-fi or fantasy to broaden people's horizons? I think anyone who just reads science fiction or fantasy is depriving themselves of a lot else that's available in the world. Give Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurty a try if you're looking for something that's epic but doesn't involve uh, fantasy landscapes. I do love a good historical novel, I love good spy fiction, and it has to be said there's still a special place in my heart for the good old-fashioned private detective, for the private eye, film noir, nothing quite like it. And Caitlin sort of gave us a command. Uh, Caitlin wrote, Ask them for a six-word story. I might be able to. Um, it all went perfectly until the blancmange. You know, there really aren't any six-word stories. There are sort of little vignettes. But seeing as you challenged me, I wrote a number of them. The one I will give you is Gun Shoots, Blood Flows, Life Goes. The saddest story I know is Eight Words. It's by F. Scott Fitzgerald. It's the saddest story in the world, and it simply goes, for sale, baby clothes. Not needed, after all. 